everybody remembers this moment. Epke Zonderland winning the gold medal in the Olympic Games. And moments like these inspire thousands of kids all across the planet. Wouldn't it be cool if we can create a planet where kids dream of becoming science and technology heroes? So how are we going to do this? Since the day it became evident that we cannot exist without these professionals in science and technology, we've been trying to persuade more and more people for science and technology, but without the great success as we've hoped for. We still have a shortage of approximately 156,000 vacancies in science and technology in the Netherlands. And although we have all those great ideas to tempt more people for science and technology, I think they're late. They are focusing on the teenagers, and we need to start earlier. So let's take a look on why I think we should focus. Here we see the process from a kid from primary school to graduation. We have kids who are inherently motivated for science and technology, who want to study science and technology for career opportunities, who want to create a better world or a better society, and you always have that creative guy or boy who doesn't want to be a, who, who doesn't want to be a, a circle and always does his own thing. But where is it going wrong in the process from primary school to graduation? Why do we only end up with such a few engineers? So let's take a look on who I believe are the three key role models, three key partners in the decision making of a child. First of all, you have the parents and family. They are the best motivators you can have. But this example is with soccer. But I bet there are only a few parents who are supporting their kids while they're doing the math homework, shouting, find the square root, do the eclipse, divided by pi. <laughs> so why is it so much harder to encourage them for science and technology? And, and you certainly remember the slide I just showed you, how, sh how shockingly few students chose for science and technology. But besides the parents, and we live in a world where technology is everywhere, as long as you are aware of it. <laughs> and I think what's learned in the cradle lasts till the tomb. But besides the parents and family, we also have the primary school teachers. But the vast majority of primary school teachers are female. And I think this is not a strong incentive <laughs> to... to encourage young boys and girls for science and technology. Everybody needs the right role model. And I, I didn't get my right role model, because when I asked my primary school teacher to give a relation between a circle and pi, she only ended up giving me this kind of feedback. <laughs> but fortunately, we have science and technology icons, like our uh, Dutch, André Kuipers, and he is bound to inspire many, many teenagers. But when I asked my neighbor across the street, who was six years old, if he knew André Kuipers, he doesn't know him. And I think those are the kids who you really want to inspire. So let's take a look through his perspective. Take a look through your own perspective. Who did you look up to when you were in the sixth grade on primary school? I looked up to the eighth grade kid who was better in playing table tennis than I was, and I wanted to be as good as him. So why don't we let the eighth grade kids show the younger kids that science can be fun and challenging, and that it is a lot less scary as they think? So what is my big idea? What's, what's the plan? This is the proof that youth can inspire youth. This is a collaboration between Fontes students, but also secondary school students and pre-university students. We competed in a, comp a competition, and the secondary school students 
and pre-university students. They took my, my team's ambassadorship for science and technology, and they inspired younger kids, the eighth grade kids. And the eighth grade kids, they built their own robot, and they, build, they, they competed in the competition as well. And the eighth grade kids, they inspired the sixth grade kids, and they built their own little robot. And by showing that science is fun and challenging, and that is a lot less theoretical as they think, I think they will inspire each other. And if you take this all worldwide, some kid will be on the internet and they will see a competition of a robot and they will be just as inspired as a kid who was watching Epke Zonderland at the beginning of the day. And from that moment, it will be youth inspiring youth. Thank you.